Now Spotlight Special, brought to you by Levi's 501 Jeans. The jeans with a personal fit. We buy them. We fill them up. We drive them. We wash them. We race them. We crash them. And on Spotlight Special, we talk to them. I was chased in my car. And, uh... They sort of like uh, ran up behind me and, and locked bumpers with me and tried to push me off the road. And we listened to them. The cars. Hello. Hello again. People, you know, especially like writers and critics, you know, they, they feel like if like the masses like something, it can't be good because Obviously, you know, if everybody likes it, you know, it doesn't make them elite and unique enough. So they usually turn off as soon as the masses accept something. It seems that, you know, the American public are liking newer things that are getting thrust upon them these days. It took them a while. I'm kind of glad they like the cars. What's this? Pace car Rick Ocasek actually glad about something? Rick Ocasek? The angular singer-songwriter who stands well over six feet and is so skinny he makes a rail seem obese? Rick Ocasek? So cool he makes a cucumber seem hot? Well, as we'll learn during the next 90 minutes, Rick, along with the rest of his fellow travelers, really has a lot of warmth, in spite of himself. Yeah. Well, there was always warmth. I mean, look, I mean, I sit down to write songs, you know, I wrench my guts out. I mean, I feel pain when I finish those songs. I, I get back aches. I get mental aches. I space out. I need to go to a home when I'm finished. You know, it's like, it's not easy. <laughs> but like, and, and you know, I, I'm not very easy to please in a funny way, you know, especially to please myself in a sense, you know. I would hope that the lyrics like spur people's imagination. I think they're in a lot of ways comical, you know, or funny to me, just the, the way the words are strung or the image that it could create. It's a little dark, you know. I mean, I, it is because I don't see things like as happy things most, most of the time. I don't see like people's relationships with other people as happy. And I don't see like life as a happy venture. Uh, some people might. I envy the people who can like go through life, you know, with a smile on their face and, and a good word for everything. But I personally, you know, have a difficult time. I want to say party Hi, I'm Jerry Bishop, and this time, the Cars Drive Spotlight Special. Our passengers, Rick Ocasek, Ben Orr, Elliot Easton, Greg Hawks, and David Robinson. Our destination? Well, that's hard to say. Ever since their debut album in 1978, the Cars have taken us wherever they want to go. And sometimes, the trip can be pretty strange. After all, the Boston-based band was one of America's first homegrown new music ensembles. On the road, the cars have earned a reputation for their cool, crisp, clean, sleek lines. Yet we'll learn that Greg Hawks really isn't as sinister as Captain Nemo behind the keyboards. We'll tour drummer David Robinson's classic pinup collection. And we'll focus in on Rick Ocasek, the man who fuels the cars. He may dress in black. He may be a master of black comedy. But Rick is also a man who truly cares. Cares about his music, his fans, and his country. So join us as we hitch a ride with cars and experience a few of their myths backfiring. We'll put her in first and peel out next on the Cars Spotlight Special. Let's set the scene. You'll usually find Rick Ocasek twisting knobs and producing obscure acts at the Cars Boston studio. Synchro sound. So where did we find Rick? Out of his element. High in the mountains of Calaveras County, California, where Mark Twain once wrote of the area's frog jumping contests. So what were these pale city boys doing out in the crisp mountain air? Beginning their first tour in about two years, the road rarely beckons the cars. No, I want to go back on the road. Not as much as I am. <laughs> No, uh, you know, I want to go back in the sense that I want to go around the country and see what's going on in the country. I like to see what people are liking. I kind of like to go out on tour to see what's going on in the country and where it's at, kind of, and how much has changed. I can tell just by playing and seeing the people and finding out what the attitude is. 
the attitude of the people. When I can pick up like a certain kind of ambience from the people, I can see how much they've gone through, with how much if they've become more open-minded and, and all those kinds of things, you know? I can sense it backstage, I can sense it, you know, on the street of the places that I am. I always felt like I was an outside kind of person because even all through school and my childhood and everything, I was always like sort of being looked at and always looking at everybody else, being the odd man. But, you know, with a few close friends, not like the life of the party, nor the king of small talk, always saying, well, you know, why do these people think I'm weird? You know, am I? <laughs> but in a funny way, you know, always felt like comfortable with it. And at one point in my life, you know, decided that it was to my advantage. Is Rick Ocasek the original misfit kid? Well, you'll have to supply your own answer. But since Rick's story is essentially the car story, we did ask him to provide his own question. Why I got in the business. And the answer is... I don't, didn't have a choice, really. I, ever since I was in college or even before, you know, I was just so enthusiastic about music as, you know, being the only light in my life that I just naturally, like, went into it and stayed in it. Just was real naive about the fact that I should never quit. I just like, just totally stayed with it, you know, the whole time. Through all the failures and through all the, all the bands and, you know. Let the good times roll. Let the knock you around. Rick Ocasek entertains young girls dressed in bunny suits. And it's not at the Playboy Club. That's next on the Cars Spotlight Special. As we'll hear later, Rick Ocasek of the Cars loves what he does so much, he can't even take a vacation. When he isn't working with the band, he's writing songs, recording a solo album, or producing somebody you've never heard of. Music's been Rick's life for as long as he can remember. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, when I was six years old, I used to do like a a little TV show my grandmother pushed me into. And it was where I'd have to go on a weekly basis and sing songs. I actually had to sing songs to little six-year-old girls who were dressed in little bunny rabbit suits and things, you know. So I had to go every week, every Saturday morning and do this for TV, for like a local TV show in Baltimore. And between all those, you know, stupid little things they they used to do they used to have this band on that was you know just using electric guitars you know just starting to use them and there was fender guitars and there was sort of like a rockabilly type band and uh i just remember at that point falling in love with guitars and that kind of music and just wanted to do it so i got a guitar when i was like 12 and started playing it and that was it. I just love the radio. I just love music. I don't care if you hurt me some more. I, I, do. Tonight. I was like different. And I might not be great, but I'm different. And that's like, all right. And I saw me like, you know, go a whole different road, you know, take the look at the map. Took the road that wasn't marked, you know, found new inspiration, you know didn't find the same inspiration as everybody else, so I didn't come out the same. Rick wasn't your typical American teenager, even after moving from Baltimore to Cleveland. Like many an aspiring musician, he practiced long into the night in his family basement. And just in case his musical career bombed, Rick was ready. You know, to tell you the truth, I did build bombs when I was about 14. I didn't know how dangerous it was until I set one off underneath a uh, telephone pole that was knocked over and laying on the side of the street and it actually broke the telephone pole in half and then I stopped making those copper bombs because I didn't realize at the time that they were like little hand grenades these are things you do I guess when you're little and you don't know what oh I wasn't that little I was 16 so we used to take them around and put them on people's front doors and blow up their houses <laughs> Up, 
Well, I had the desire to not uh, fit into the crowd. I had that desire. There always seemed to be something wrong with it. Too much phony stuff in it. But I don't know why I went that way or anything. The way Rick Ocasek went was from Cleveland to New York to Boston. And this time, he knew why. I went to Boston because it was like a stop after I'd been to New York for about a couple years. And I was playing in clubs in New York. And, you know, it was pretty tough down there, like sleeping in cars and sleeping in like bathtubs and stuff. People were saying that if I went to Boston, you know, there was a lot of clubs up there I could play at. So I just kind of went up there to see it. And I ended up just staying there. Because I guess I, I got enough money to, for rent for a month, and then I just ended up making enough to make the rent. So I ended up kind of staying there. And that's what happened. Oh, heartbeat city, here we go. The cars roll off the assembly line. Next on Spotlight Special. The band from Boston broke out of Beantown in 1978 with an album titled, cleverly enough, The Cars. Amazingly, critics and the public alike both climbed in, intrigued by the concept of an American group playing new wave European techno pop with warmth, humor, and style. Astonishingly, the cars have never buckled up for safety, changing their approach from record to record. And yet, they always managed to sound like the cars. I mean, one thing it was definitely was the combination of the people and the way they played music, you know, the way they felt their instruments and the style that they had accumulated, you know, the kind of style they played in. For instance, uh, the cars were a band, you know, when we even started the band, considered that I had been playing with Benjamin Orr for like eight years already. Bass player Benjamin Orr, the band's other lead singer, the man who gives the cars drive. Who's gonna tell you when? It's too. Elliot I'd had in two other bands, the lead guitar player. Greg I'd had in two other bands. Greg is keyboard maestro Greg Hawks, the man who looks like Captain Nemo from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea behind his bank of black and white keys. Greg is the only car who ever writes with Rick, and the man usually charged with the task of arranging Rick's music. Sometimes, Greg has no idea what in the heck Ocasek is trying to say, but that's okay with him. Yeah, sure. There's one that always made me chuckle in a dangerous type, I think. The museum directors with their art shaky heads or something. And, oh, and there's one in Dream Away, chicken counters fill your bowls. <laughs> I don't know what it means. <laughs> Chicken counters fill your bowls. But it's just a funny image to me. It makes me laugh. Then there's drummer David Robinson, the man who sees to it that the cars fire on all five cylinders. David was the last one to come in. I thought, well, David Robinson, who was in a band called DMZ, I'll just go steal him. Interestingly enough, it's David who's responsible for the futuristic look of the cars, although the album covers he designs are definitely not from the future. In fact, their roots are in the 40s, in that celebration of the all-American girl, the pinup. It's not erotic to me. I mean, it's maybe it's like titillating or something. I don't know what the right word would be. But uh, they're almost, you know, they're almost like historical artifacts, too. I mean, that's a, that was a real short period that they were painted in. And uh, it just says a lot about like, the 40s, mostly. And some of them are beautifully executed paintings. And people, you know, like other crafts, artists aren't as good as they were. There's nobody as good as Vargas. And I can't imagine why there ever will be. It's just gone. Always dancing down the street With this way Austin puts its radio into the cars, next on Spotlight Special. We had about 30, 40 songs, and we went to every club in town and booked ourselves into it ourselves, mostly lying to the, like, the club owners and telling them that we played top 40 or whatever, and we'd go in and get the job, play the night, take the money, get fired, because we weren't top 40. They weren't top 40. But the cars were good. They proved it by cutting 20 demos. Now, Boston Radio has a tradition of playing Boston bands. So when Rick and the crew showed one of their tunes to a lady jock named Max, 
she played it to the max. She played just what I needed, and the phone request just happened to be the like number one requested thing for months. And all of a sudden, the record companies noticed. I don't mind you coming here, wasting all my time. As the car's most recognizable figure, fame gave Rick Ocasek just what he didn't need, recognizability. Maybe MTV changed it. Maybe I smiled too much on MTV. Could be. After all, stories abound about how Rick, who stands out in a crowd of one, could go to the corner market and not be bothered. Now that we've seen he's not such a cool customer, people aren't afraid to come up to him. Well, I always go out, yeah. It's really difficult now these days. And it really is becoming more and more difficult, but I, I just like, um, I just forget, you know, I just forget. I mean, I can just like walk down the street and think, you know, well, they couldn't be that interested. <laughs> you know, so I just like refuse to sort of like get hung up in that. You know, I don't think I've ever been too caught up in this fame trip or this pop star trip. I really know in this funny way I'm a lot different than a lot of other people in the business that I know that like live on it. So, you know, in a funny way, I've tried to I'd stay away from it. You might think, and so does Rick Ocasek. He'll tell us exactly what he thinks next on the Cars Spotlight Special. Their albums may be covered with pinup art, but don't think the cars live in a man's world. Far from it. Rick Ocasek's songs deliver a clear warning to women. Yeah, a warning for sure. A warning that, you know, you can't pay for fun in your life and you can't find happiness, you know. You have to be happy with yourself before you can be happy with anything else, you know, which is probably the most difficult thing in the world to be. And you can't trust everybody, you know, in a it's a bad thing to say, but, you know, you can't, like, trust everybody who says, I love you, you know, let's go to bed. I mean, you're not going to wake up the next day in love. You might never find it, you know. It's, it's rare to find, you know, the people who care between each other, people who, like, uh, you know, who are willing to, like, give as much as they take. It's just difficult, I think, for people to, to find those kinds of relationships, you know, with other people. And don't keep I love you on the tip of your tongue, you know. Like, for everybody who comes along, you know. I mean, it's just like it gets loose, the word gets loose, and it means nothing. It's too heavy of an emotion, the emotion of it is like too strenuous and too insane to think that you can fall in and out of it every other day. Come on, lover, make a switch. Come on, lover. Women are more the victims, you know, than men, I think, you know, anyway, in this society. No matter what anybody says, it's not that fair, you know. It's like men are on the stalk and women are the prey, you know. It just seems to me, you know, all the time. Uh, I, I don't know if that's true, but that's kind of the way I see it, you know. It's like men are, like, pretty, like, cruel in a funny way, you know. I shouldn't say this, but, you know, they are. It's different for everybody. I, I'm no real authority on the subject, you know. That's for sure. But I just see a lot of people, and people always say things to me about their relationships and, and uh, I just like gather the fuel, you know, put it into songs and it just seems that it always comes out kind of the same kind of story, you know. What am I going to do with my life? Who do I trust? Will I ever fall in love? I think I fell in love today or no, wait, maybe I didn't. Relationships, people love communication between people are the most important things in a lifetime, you know. To me, like, the most important thing is people with people because that's what makes the world. So I read a lot of songs about those kinds of things. At least they're observations of the kind of messes people can get themselves into. And sometimes they're just my little stories about people, you know. All of which are true. I've said before they're like fiction, but you know, it's like, they're like true fiction. It's, I mean, when I write a song about any song, you know, I mean, I definitely have a person or the situation in my head, you know, and it did happen or it's happening. I mean, the person will never find out who it's about, maybe. Maybe they'll know. Sometimes I think that the person that I write it about is going to hear it and know it's about them. 
And I've had people come up to me and say, did you do that for me? And I say, no, because I don't want them to get nervous. I have to feel feelings that other people don't to write, to be a writer, period, to be at all creative. Some people are not willing to feel the things, so they just sort of like go along and live the life, you know? But for me, it's painful. Rick Ocasek attempts a disappearing act as he performs magic. Next on the Cars Spotlight Special. I don't know how many times I read the cars broke up. I always thought that was so funny because, you know, the cars never broke up ever. That's because between their Shake It Up and Heartbeat City albums, the cars took an 18 month vacation. And what a vacation! Greg Hawks did a solo album while Rick Ocasek made four LPs. His own, plus discs for Iggy Pop, Bad Brains, and Alan Vega. That's about what I did. Four records on my vacation. I hate vacations. I can't stand them. I, I go crazy when I go on vacations. So does that make Rick a workaholic? Yeah, the workaholic thing. I don't know. That's a stupid word, you know. Yeah, it is productive, I think. I think you do what you like to do, you know, and if you, if you love it enough, you know, you just do it all the time. And it's definitely productive, and it's like what you want to do. I don't know any way out of it. I guess you have to find somebody that understands, you know, that well, that's what you do, kind of. And, you know, that's how much you want to be into it. Look, you know, you can do anything to get away from the things that bother you, kind of, you know. But you can only be productive once, you know. And then in comes the smiling mortician, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, you have to do it, you know. If you want to do it, I mean, I'm glad there are some productive people and people who care about what they do enough to do it all the time. Everything's heaven said, that's what you said and when. I refuse to eat The Cars. They refuse to slam on the brakes. Each time they cut a new record, each time they play with a new high-tech musical instrument, each time they write a comically obscure lyric, they become even more popular. Why? A couple of reasons. First, pop music fans are more willing to experiment than critics give them credit for. And second, the public is catching on to the warmth of the cars. This band cares, cares about its music, cares about what it has to say, and cares about the people who listen. And if you listen carefully, you'll hear their warmth and passion. How do they do it? Why, it's magic. People live out their fantasies, you know, through you, in a way. And rightfully so, because we have great things happening to us all the time. Spotlight Special is a production of ABC Watermark. Executive producer Tom Rounds. Produced by Janice Hahn, with Alan Daniel Goldblatt, Mike Williams, Ron Shapiro, and Stu Jacobs. Project coordinator, Denise Oliver. I'm Jerry Bishop, and this is the ABC Radio Network. Spotlight Special has been brought to you by Levi's 501 Jeans, the jeans with a personal fit.